So welcome to a brief video on using ADF tests to decide whether a series is stationary or not. A problem we often face is that in our economic intuition, we know that a series should represent some sort of equilibrating relationship or have a standard mean over time or have a stable variance. But when we run our ADF tests, we find that this is not supported. Well, in fact, that it tends to accept the fact that there has an I1 series. This, of course, causes us lots of confusion because in modeling, whether we choose to model with an I1 series or an I0 series can have great implications for the outcomes of our model. Here, I want to show you an example of this sort of problem and the sorts of steps one should go through to try and work out exactly what decision you want to make as an applied economist. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is the problem that comes about when we have a series which tests formally without rejecting non-stationarity, but we might not think of it as being non-stationary in theory. This is where our economics and our econometrics fit together to make us an applied econometrician or an applied economist. This, or a good example of this is what we call Tobin's Q. Now Tobin's Q is the ratio of the stock value, stock market value, or any other market value of a asset, usually a physical asset, but we tend to use it more broadly than that, over the replacement value. So it's very useful in thinking about investment. So that's Q equals this. So when things are in balance, it's a kind of an equilibrium concept, then this is approximately equal to one because it basically says that the stock market value of the asset is representing the sound amount as it could be for replacement value. You can see this because when you think about Q greater than one, that would make that the stock market value of the asset in use in the company, for example, is greater than the replacement value. So that would say that, for example, the assets held by a company in forms of vehicles are of greater value in, in production in that company than they are sitting um, on the floor of the sales floor. So that will tend to lead to investment. So when Q is greater than one, you can get more out of the capital by putting it in a company than you can by having it in, in its physical asset form as a replacement. Likewise, when Q is less than one, then you can get replacement value is more than the stock market value. So there's no incentive for you to go out and buy an investment good and put it into capital goods in a company. And in fact, in extreme forms, this could lead to asset stripping, okay, where um, the replacement value is greater than the stock market value. So you buy a company, you strip its assets out, sell them separately, and you make more money. So clearly Tobin's Q is some sort of equilibrium concept. Okay, we expect that Q equals one, and ultimately disturbances away from that will lead us back towards one in some form or the other, okay? So that's the first part of thinking about Tobin's Q as an equilibrium concept as an economist. So now let's look at some data and see what we might actually want to learn about a Tobin's Q. This is a proxy for the Tobin's Q measure for the period 1980 to 2007 in Australia, based on a numerator of the Australian Stock Exchange Index and a denominator based on the GDP deflator you can see that it has an upward trend. And of course, it's not a perfect measure of what we really want of Q, but many of the different measures give something like a similar picture. It's got some sort of upward trend going on. It certainly doesn't look like a value of one, but we really want to know whether this is some sort of equilibrium concept that we could use. Key to knowing whether this is a proper equilibrating relationship for our investment decisions is knowing whether this is a non-stationary or a stationary series. In theory, it should be stationary. That is, it's something that we come back to all the time with a constant mean. 
in practice, it looks here as though maybe there's evidence that it's going to be non-stationary, in which case it might not do what we want it to do. So let's have a look at that as an empirical exercise and practice our skills on working out whether we're going to do a theoretical or empirically based decision around this particular variable.